This is Big F and Joe, and you're listening to the Memphis Continental Wrestling Podcast. Without Memphis, there would be no hardcore, and obviously we all know where that leads. Live your best life, die your best death. You know, I've been in this industry for a long, long time. And you know, I got my start right there in Memphis, Tennessee. So what better person than to give a little intro to the only podcast in the UK that specifically talks about Memphis wrestling. That's right. We're talking about Memphis Continental Wrestling Cast. Folks, sit back, grab you a cup of hot tea. Hope you enjoy it. Memphis Continental Wrestling Cast. Got a doggone good-looking show lined up. This is the future, baby, and Jimmy Hart's here. You're not in the same caliber as I am. Who's the greatest wrestler in the world and why am I? You're acting like a hoodlum. Now, come on, quit it. Make a hole with a gun perpendicular to the name of this town in a desktop flow. Exit wound in a foreign nation, showing the home of the one this was written for. My apartment looks upside down from there. Water spirals the wrong way out the sink. And her voice is a backwards record. It's like a whirlpool and it never ends. In the glow of each other's majestic presence Listen in and hear my words To the ones you would think I would say If there was a me for you All alone at the 64 World Fair 80 dolls yelling small girl after all Who was at the DuPont Pavilion? Why was the bench still warm? Who had been there? Or the time when the storm tangled up the wire To the horn on the pole at the bus depot And in back of the edge of hearing These are the words that the voice was repeating And her and I are getting older We still haven't walked in the glow of each other's majestic presence Listen and I hear my words To the ones you would think I would say If there was a me for you when I was driving once, I saw this painted on a bridge. I don't want the world. I don't want to a house. They don't need me here, and I know you're there. Where the world goes by like the humid air. And it sticks like a broken record. Everything sticks like a broken record. Everything sticks until it goes away And the truth is we don't know anything And I and I are getting older We still have to walk in the glow of each other's majestic presence Listen and I hear my words They're the ones you would think I would say If there was a me for you In the glow of each other's majestic presence Listen and I hear my words And the ones you would think I would say If there was a me for you And I and I are getting old And we still haven't walked In the glow of each other's majestic presence Listen and I hear my words And the ones you would think I would say If there was a me for you Ho! Oh, what do you hear? What do you say? Hello again, wrestling fans, and welcome to the studios of the Old Bakery as we get ready to give you another exciting week here at the UK's number one and only Memphis wrestling related podcast. We are, as always, the Memphis Content Wrestling Cast. Hoping the podcast finds you fine and dandy here on the 1st of June. Unbelievably, the 1st of June. And that is why I sound so quiet. One second. That's better. You should be able to hear me a little bit better now. 
I just uh, looked at my settings and the uh, the OBS little bar thing wasn't going up and down where I wanted it to. Now I should be over coming over loud and clear. Yes, we are on the 1st of June. We are uh, halfway through the year. Thank you very much for your continued support as always and thank you very much for joining us this week. Please, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button here on the home, the place to be, Wrestling Network, bringing you such great shows as Who's Next with This Ring, PTB Weekend Special, PTBN's main event, WrestleTracks and so many other great shows including everything coming to you exclusively from the old bakery productions be it Memphis Continental Wrestling Cast In Your House Monday Night Project Hamburg All-Stars Pure Russell Passion or anything else that comes to you on a on a whim and a fancy that takes me you can find out more information about the network on Twitter at PTBN Wrestling you can find them on all good podcast suppliers and they're on YouTube just search the place to be uh, network on YouTube because uh, regularly on the YouTube channel they put out old episodes of um, po- past podcasts. They also do a few other things on there. Uh, and then also you can find our sister network on YouTube. That is the North South Connection. You can also find them on all good podcast suppliers and they bring in you such great shows as Row One, Seat One, Wrestling Warzone, The Jenny Position, Alakatwa Keithy, Hail to the Keith, Cronoso, Extreme Three Row Dance and so many other great shows. You can find out more about the network on Twitter at no so Pod Network, and like we said, they're on YouTube because some of their shows are audio, video only and they also do snippets from Cronoso are on there so you can watch uh, usually JT and Keith or sometimes JT and Ryan doing things from Cronoso on the YouTube and also now we have a another network the uh, the bastard child of uh, place to be in north south connection the backbone wrestling network a beautiful coming together of some of the best shows from PTBN and no so including new Genona mission Ruthless Aggression Highway to the Impact Zone and new shows such as Cross Up the Shit Take and many more coming to you in the near future you can find out more about the network on twitter at backbone24 that's backbone and then the number 24 and you can also find them on all good podcast suppliers backbone wrestling network i would imagine also there may be a youtube channel coming up in the near future talking of youtube you can find us youtube.com forward slash at memphis cast allows you to watch the show today uh, there is a link in the description as, as well as always so click on that link and that'll take you to our fabulous youtube channel well over 1900 subscribers we also do the odd uh, the odd live as well i started doing that a few weeks ago um i used to do a lot of sort of lives on um uh social media but as i'm not on social media anymore i decided to uh, Thanks to Joe Murata of a YouTube uh, of OVP, sorry, he uh, sort of I saw his and thought, I know what I could do, I could do, I could do that. So I've uh, done a couple so far, just sort of just sitting for an hour or so, just shooting the breeze, talking to anyone who comes along. So that's all good fun. YouTube.com forward slash at Memphis Cast. And then while you're out and about, please visit when it was cool.com for podcast articles and much more on retro pop culture, comics, wrestling, movies, TV, toys, history, and more. And also the history of WWE.com for all information and history on the WWF, the WWF, the WWE. You name it, Richard and Graham have got you covered. The history of WWE.com. This week, we're covering the 4th of August, 1984. Last week we covered two weeks. We covered the 21st and the 28th of July. We saw promos from the looks of the Rock and Roll Express, King Kong Bundy. We also saw New Champ. We saw some whipping, as well as all the other usual awesomeness from the Memphis Territory. Before we head down to ringside, let's just see what's been going on around the rest of the wrestling world this week. On the 29th of July 1984, there was a show in the Harvard Civic Center in in Hartford, Connecticut. For the WWF, 10,500 are witnessing the WWF Women's Tag Team Champions Velvet McIntyre and Princess Victoria defeating Peggy Lee and Peggy Patterson. Mr. Fuji defeats Gamma Singh. The Haiti Kid defeats Dana Capender. Car- <laughs> Carpenter. <laughs> Iron Mike Sharp defeated Billy Travis. Samoan Samula defeated Charlie Fulton. The Wild Samoans being Afron Seeker defeat Butcher Vashon and Rene Goulet. The Iron Sheik defeats Jose Luis Rivera. Bob Orton Jr. defeats Chief J. Strongbow. Greg Valentine defeated Tony Guerrero. Bob Backlund defeated B. Brian Blair. They did that last time as well. Because uh, there was, was all the B's. Roddy Piper defeats Jimmy Snooker. WF champion Hulk Hogan defeats Paul Orndorff in a show where we may see clips of today. On the 30th of July, there is a show here in Memphis, Tennessee. One of the main matches is King Kong Bundy defeating Tommy Rich to win the Southern title. Eddie Gilbert was the special guest referee. Also on the 30th in Championship Wrestling from Florida in West Palm Beach, Florida, the the Auditorium. Dusty Rhodes defeats NWA World Champion Ric Flair by disqualification. 
That goes for the 31st of July in the Sun Dome in Tampa, Florida. Also on the 31st, there is a show in all Japan in the Sumo Hall in Tokyo, Japan. 12,500 witnessing Tarzan Goto defeating Toshiyaki Kawada. The great Kajika and Rocky Hater defeat Master Masafuchi and Hiramichi Fuyaki. Magic Dragon defeats Ultra 7, Oshura Hara and Otsushi Unita. And Takayashi Ishikawa defeat Roger Kirby, Hugo Sevinovich and Karl von Steiger. NWA International Junior Champion the Mighty Inoue defeated Johnny Mantel. Great Kabuki battled Dick Slater to a double count to a double disqualification. Genichiwa Tenaru defeats Alexis Smiloff. AWA World Champion Rick Martel battled Jumbo Saruda to a double countout. Giant Bubba defeats Stan Hansen to win the PWF title. The 1st of August 1984, Championship Wrestling from Florida in the Convention Hall in Miami, Florida. NWA World Champion Rick Flair defeats Billy Jack Haynes by disqualification. 2nd of October, sorry, 2nd of August in Lake City, Florida. The Community Center, Scott McGee, substituting for Barry Windham, defeated NWA World Champion Rick Flair in a non title match. Also on the 2nd, uh, New Japan have got a show this time again in the Sumo Hall. It's same venue, different promotion. 12,000 people. Witness no Naoko Sano defeating Kikechi Yamada, like known as Jushin Thunder Liger. Fumi Hero Nikawa defeated Shinju Kusugu. Kantara Hoshono and Norio Honage defeated Osamo Kido and Black Cat. I should get this one right. The British Bulldogs <laughs> defeated. <laughs> It's Samu Teranashi and Animal Hamaguchi. Yoshi Yakiyatsu defeated El Kenek. Seji Sakaguchi and Kengo Kimura defeated Bad News Alan and Rip Oliver. Tatsumi Fujinami defeated David Schultz. NWA World Junior Heavyweight Champion The Cobra battled Kunoyuki Kobayashi to a double countout. Antonio Inoki pinned Riki Choshu. This was the last New Japan show at the old Sumo Hall. 3rd of August 1984, AWA have got a show in Denver, Colorado. Steve Kerner, Tony Atlas defeating Nick Bockwinkle and Mr. Saito. Billy Robertson defeating Steve Regal. Not that one. Tony Atlas defeats Larry Zabisco. The Road Warriors defeat Steve O and Kurt Henning. And then finally, we've got a few shows coming up on the 4th here. We've got three. We've got three. Three shows on the 4th of August 1984. Championship Wrestling from Florida, Lakeland, Florida. NWA World Champion Ric Flair defeats Superstar Billy Graham. And then finally, two shows from the WWF. The first is in the Boston Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. 9,000 people. SD Jones defeats Pete Doherty. Chief Chase Strongbow defeats Butcher for Sean. Paul Orndorff defeats B. Brian Blair. Princess Victoria and Velvet McIntyre defeat Peggy Lee and Peggy Passon. Don Morocco defeats Tony Guerrilla, WF champions, WF tag team champions Adrian Adonis and Dick Murdoch defeat the Waltz and Moens with Captain Lou as special referee. Ivan Putski defeated Bob Orton, Roddy Piper defeats Jimmy Snooker, and there is a second show for the WF in the Philadelphia Spectrum, 12,908 in attendance. This is also televised on the Prism Network. Don't you just love it? Bob Backlund defeats Salvatore Bolomo. Gamma Singh defeated Dave Barbie. Mr. Fuji defeated Tiger Chung Lee. Agent Andre the Giant defeated Big John Stud via countout. WF champion Hulk Hogan pinned Greg Valentine. The Freebirds, Michael Hayes, Terry Gordy, and Buddy Roberts, accompanied by David Wolf and Cindy Lauper, defeat Ron Shaw, Rene Goulet, and Charlie Fulton. Haiti Kid defeated Dana Carpenter. Iron Mike Sharp defeated Jose Luis Rivera. Jesse Ventura defeated Rocky Johnson via countout. Kamala defeated Fred Marziano. Ken Patera defeated Steve Lombardi. WWF Intercontinental Champion Tito Santana pinned the Iron Sheik. Freddie Blassie was the special referee for the bout, but referee Joe Morella countered the pinfall when Blassie was busy kicking trash out of the ring and ignoring Santana's cover. This is a very notable card for the WF in Philadelphia. First, this was the former WF champion Bob Backlund's last appearance in the WF for eight years until he returned in 1992. Uh, many completely forgot that Bob Backlund stayed in the WF for about eight months after he lost the title to the Iron Sheik. Bob Backlund would only wrestle sporadically over the next eight years in the United States and Japan with long absences often between short stints. This show also marked the debut of the fabulous Freebirds in the WF. After being a red-hot sensation in Texas for the world-class championship wrestling promotion, they now are brought into the big time. However, their stay did not last long. Almost every member stepped on someone's toes during their short stay. Most importantly, they supposedly angered Andre the Giant with their attitude. Andre the Giant had the yeah, respect, drawing power and tenure, so nobody, no matter how hot they were elsewhere, made Andre 
angry. The fabulous freebirds only lasted 57 days in the WWF, totaling 16 matches. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do business. <laughs> yeah, don't don't uh, don't piss off Andre. Anywho, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's head down to Lance Russell and Dave Brown as we are about to witness episode 159 of the Memphis Continental Wrestling Cast as we cover the 4th of August 1984. Ladies and gentlemen, you know the drill. <gasps> Please enjoy. <laughs> Think that's not a good looking group. You better be that. Hello again, everybody. This is Lance Russell without Dave today. He'll be back with us again next week. We have a sensational show lined up for you that'll be opening up with Rick Rude and Big King Kong Bundy in a tag match. It'll be our opener. By golly, we've got some great videotape too that I think you're going to enjoy seeing. Hickerson and the Spoiler tangling with the Rock and Roll Express. Additionally, Right here, we're going to be looking at Mr. Ito and the animal going in a tag match. And our final expiration of time, looking forward to this one. Two very fast teams and excellent wrestling teams. The new generation with Kojo Yamamoto. And they'll be going against the Nightmares with Jimmy Hart. All of that action and a lot more coming up. Let's get started. Back in just a moment. Oh, yeah. Coming out right now, Jimmy Hart. Along thunder with thunder and lightning are here, baby. Ah, thunder and lightning, meaning Big King Kong, Bundy, and Rude. Official introductions coming in at a total weight of 439 pounds, both from Memphis. On the right of the screen will be Jim Jameson and Ken Raper. Their opposition, thunder and lightning, as Jimmy Hart calls them. The big guy at 460 on your right, King Kong Bundy out of Atlantic City, New Jersey. Now one of Hollywood's finest, 238 pounds, Rick Rude. Rude and Bundy against Jameson and Raper. Your referee is Jerry Calhoun. We are ready to go. And obviously... And we are underway. Lance Russell on his own this week. No Dave, but Relance did have a nice color on that come up and said Lance Russell. So we've got tag team action to start us off. Ken Raper and Jim Jameson going against Rick Rude and King Kong Bundy, managed by Jimmy Hart. Ken Raper starting off. Uh, white trunks, white boots going against Rick Rude. Uh, sort of zebra print tights, red boots. Suplexes. No, hold. Yeah, suplexes Ken Raper up and tags in Bundy. Bandy, black singlet, black boots. Eyebrows, I believe, as well. Jerry Calhoun wearing a lovely blue top. We've got uh, green ropes, blue canvas. Full house as always here on a beautiful summer's day in Memphis, Tennessee, I'd imagine. 1984. Close on there by Bundy. Drops the knee across the chest. Bundy. Nope. Picks him up by two. Bundy said something. Bundy picks up Ken Rebbe. Oh, good lord. Slams him down with a Oh! Elbow smashed there by Bundy. Tags in Rick Rude. Rude's in. Oh, knee in the gut. Irish whips Ken Rayburn in his own corner. Jim Jameson now tagged in. Blue chunks, white boots. Excuse me. Oh, big clobbering elbow, uh, forearm smash. Knee to the gut by Rude. Rude picks up Jameson. Oh, drop hot shots him across the top rope. Jameson's down. Oh, double leg drop there by Rude. Rude picks up Jameson. Oh, punch. <laughs> Just a punch. <laughs> Rude picks up Jameson. Again, drops him fruit first across the top rope. Tagging a bandit. Bundy picks up Jameson. Oh, big knife face chop against the ropes. Rocking the Memphis native. Irish whip. Oh, big knife face chop off the ropes. Bundy now stepping on the. Oh, stomping away on the chest of Jim Jameson. Bundy picks him up again by the hair. Scoops him up. Oh, backbreaker. Goes for the, does he go for the cover? One-handed cover. One, two. No, picks him up again. Very cocky Bundy here. Cocky Bundy? Oh, over at the back. 
Drops down Jameson. Started. Rude and Bundy. There is no two ways about it. Jameson rammed into the knee of uh, Rick Rude. Rick Rude now tagged in legally. Are shipped by Bundy. Bundy catches him in the bear hug. Rick Rude goes second up on the inside. Here yeah, clothesline. Rude goes for the cover. One, two, three. Winners of the match. King Kong Bundy and Rick Rude. So the winners and dominant in three minutes and five seconds throughout the entire action. That particular was a combination. We were talking about tag team. They evidently had gotten together on something because as we look back on it, Bundy grabbed Jameson, held him in that huge bear hug, and then it was Rick Rude coming off the ropes. Ken uh, over on the side, not being able to help at all, and Rude nails him. You saw he come all, came all the way down from uh, King Kong Bundy. So, 3.05 the time, the winners, Rude and Bundy. Rick Rude didn't have it all that easy, and I'll tell you, there was a match that involved Jerry Lawler and Rick Rude. I want to show you just the end of it. I, I don't know that Jerry is going to say this was his finest hour, but perturbed he was, provoked he was, and I'm talking about with Angel. Take a careful look at all of the action that took place. So this here footage of the pole strap match. Jimmy Hart, that's right, Jerry Lawler and versus Rick Rude. Rick Rude managed by Jimmy Hart and Angel. Jerry Lawler's climbing up to the top rope. He's grabbed the strap from the pole. Rick Rude's down in the middle of the ring. Jerry Lawler wins the match, and now Jerry Lawler's whipping the dog shit out of Rick Rude. That big old leather belt. Oh, one for Jimmy Hart. Angel's in. She's now on the back of Jerry Lawler. Angel's on the back of Jerry Lawler. Jerry Lawler grabs his uh, punch down, and then Rude grabs the whip, and he's now whipping him with that belt. Much to the delight of Jimmy Hart and Angel. Lawler's wearing yellow and black. It looks like a bee for some reason. Jimmy Hart now uh, attacking. Angel's now whipping uh, Lawler now. She's having a go. She's all over Lawler all over that uh, strap. Oh, around the knees. Rude's now got the belt again. Oh no, he just punched he just punched uh, Lawler. He just Lawler ducked the clo ducked the big right fist. Lawler's got hold of Angel. Good lord, Lawler's got hold of Angel. Oh my god. No, 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 Lawler. Oh my god, he just pile drived Angel, he just pile drived Angel. And the crowd are going bananas. Good god almighty. The crowd go absolutely ballistic for Lawler. Just pile drive a woman. Holy shit. Woof. You saw her jump right astride Jerry's back, and of course that provoked the whole thing along with previous incidents in there. Uh, Angel is not with us uh, right now. You can bet on that. Woof. We're going to be back in just a moment. I think, I think that's it. I don't think we see Angel again. Also, someone we don't see again uh, for another till March is going to be Coco. Coco and Norvell are currently in Mid South. Here is uh, King Kong Bundy and Rick Rude. Bundy and Rude, and of course Jimmy Hart is here also. Can you believe the World Cup of Professional Wrestling? One hundred thousand dollars to the winner, winner, baby! Thunder and right. lightning, Jimmy Hart. You know I am so excited about this tournament. Look at him! I've already bought my Japanese outfit, baby. I'm ready to go. Look at this, Michelo check. I want to just show you something. Can you get a camera this way? Hey, can you wake the cameraman up if he can move this thing? Yeah, you see you these worry. ribs are taped, baby, from Michelo check ramming that helmet into me. But I'm a man, baby, and that's why I'm back out on TV today, Michelo check. You understand that? Bundy, what are we gonna do, baby? What I want you to look do? at this team. Look at the two brick houses. 450 and 250 brick houses. We're going to Japan. We're gonna win that tournament. Now Fargo and Rich, we got you in the first round. First round, you two punks are going down, and I don't care who's there, Fargo, Valiant, Lawler, Dundee, you're looking at the champions. We're going to win this tournament right here, and then we'll go to Japan, and we're taking everything. Well, of course, the Japanese part starts in January of 85. I want to tell you something, Lance. I'm sick to my stomach. Shut up. I'm sick to my stomach about this filthy pig. Who these, these people just love Jerry Lawler, don't you? Don't you? Yeah. You see what he did to my ballet? Is that how he got his name, the king, by beating up women? 
three people in that ring, Lance. Why didn't he come after me? I'm the one he signed to fight, not my ballet. Now I got a bunch of problems. I got hospital bills. I got a ballet that's no good to me anymore. Jerry Lawler, you're so tough. What? Shut up. Jerry Lawler, you're so tough. Why don't you come out here right now and step in that ring? Why don't you guys go back to the dressing room? Come on, let's get Lawler out here right now. Come on, Lawler. You know, Lawler, I can't have a thing about this tag team tournament coming up. I don't care about Tommy Wildflower Rich or Jackie Dookie Fargo, whatever his name is. I want Jerry Lawler, but I don't want to wait till Monday. I want Jerry Lawler right now. Come on out here, Lawler. Let's see how bad you are. Come on. Get him out here, man. You guys have had him, man. Get him out here. We've got to show the We're getting Lawler. We're going to get Lawler. You better be thinking about that tank. Where is he? He's not Where is coming he? out here. Where is he? Where is he? we got to show the dude. Big, bad, Jerry Lawler. I'll make the show. Angel's got to have to correct his surgery on her neck, and that's why he's so upset with this. How would you like it if somebody picked your wife hey, up and piled drive her, Russell? Like you wouldn't like but it? I wouldn't expect her to jump in and jump on somebody's back the way you You mean, uh, if somebody wasn't hitting you, she wouldn't jump in to help you? What kind of wife is that? Well, let me tell you something, Lawler. Like Rick said, you're going to be paid back for this. Lance, the is a pile driver a legal move? Oh, Where's the fight? He piled on my belly! Not me. Hey, don't somebody else, Lola, you geek, but you're gonna get yours. Don't worry about that. Come on, we'll King get Kong, baby. World Cup, here we come. Go ahead and cut. He'd be out here right now. Where is he? You're yellow. I don't care. Nobody's keeping me down. These filthy pigs. These stinking pigs. They ain't keeping me down. I'm gonna be here. Well, I tell you what, Jimmy, you better settle that dude down before he gets into that World Cup tournament and in there. They won't be in there five minutes. That is an impressive team. There's no question about that. Let me give you some information regarding the action coming up Monday night at the Coliseum because, boy, I will tell you, this is one tremendous night that we have been looking forward to ever since we heard the word that uh, Jared Promotions have been given the rights for the Mid-South Elimination Tournament for the $100,000 Japanese World Cup Tag Championship. Now, the finals and the elimination of, will be held in Tokyo in January of 1985. They're having regional eliminations with various promoters around the country, and each one of them will be sending a representative. The promoters have 10 teams that will be vying for the action. It will all be decided on Monday night, one night of action, the winner will then have six months of training and preparation in order to get ready for that $100,000 World Cup championship. First round matches. Look at this. This is just the first round of action where the promoters put them down the way they thought the fans would like to see them. Rick Rude, King Kong Bundy going against Tommy Wildfire Rich and his partner on a late change, the fabulous Jackie Fargo. Now, we're going to tell you more about that so don't go away because we have some really interesting information regarding this first round. That is not the way it was originally going. Look at this team. Dutch Mantel teaming with the superstar Bill Dundee who is returning for this World Cup elimination uh, tournament coming up. Going against the classy team of the Nightmares. You'll see him out here in action against the new generation a little bit later. Jerry Lawler and his partner, handsome Jimmy Valley. Yeah. They will be facing the rugged team of Randy Savage, Lanny Poffo, Poffo Mania going against Lawler and Valiant. And that is also a first round match. Then we're talking about the new generation with Tojo at ringside going against Mr. Ito and the animal with Jimmy Hart at ringside. And then the final of the first round matches will be Rick Morton, Robert Gibson, the Rock and Roll Express, facing the Southern Tag Champs, Phil Hickerson, and the Spoiler. Those are all first round matches. And brother, this, I'm telling you, is going to be something. Elimination matches will continue until one team is declared the winner, and that team will be the representative in Tokyo next January with a shot. Mind you, a shot, and it will be a tough one for any team that makes it at the $100,000. First round matches set up by the promoters. 
And boy, I will tell you, here they are, Rude and Bundy against Rich and Fargo, Nightmares against Mantell and Dundee, Savage and Popo against Lawler and Valiant, New Generation will be going against Ito and the Animal, and Rick and Robert against Tickerson and the Spoiler, and there is the way it will come down in the teams that will have to be faced. And when you start talking 100,000 bucks, friend, going to be a whole lot of shaking going on. Monday night, Coliseum, it happens, and let me tell you, you want to be right there. Ticket price is only up a buck, and friend, get them early. You can get them today until 5 o'clock, and uh, you can get them uh, all day on Monday. And here is one of the gentlemen that will be right there with a partner, handsome Jimmy, Jerry the King Lawler. Jerry. I'm looking forward to that, Lance, but before I talk about that, let me just say a couple of words about what Rick Rude and uh, Jimmy Hart had to say. Now, I think that everybody that's known me over the years knows one thing about me, and that's that I don't hit women. But let me, well, let me qualify that statement. I don't hit ladies, okay? Now, when Rick Rude comes into this area and he brings a valet with him and he sits her at ringside, if she's there just to take off his jacket and just to groom his hair, then that kind of thing is fine with me. But you know, and all of the wrestling fans out there know, that in every match she has constantly interfered. She has used everything from uh, spraying powder in people's face to her high heel shoes. Yep. She's jumped in the ring, on my back as the, film, as the film shows. When she does that, I think that she shows to everybody that she is certainly no lady. And she puts herself, she puts herself into a position where she doesn't belong, right in there with the men, and I just had to treat her just like any other wimp, and I, popped, I dropped her right on her head, and Rick Rude, I'll do the same thing to you, jerk. Now, you're out here screaming for me, I'm here, where are you? If you want me so bad, brother, I'm right here, I'm not hard to find. So anytime you want some of me, Rick Rude, you're more than welcome to it, brother. Well, I tell you one thing, Jerry, that really irritated me about Rude's attitude. He wasn't concerned about Angel. He was concerned about the hospital bills and the fact he doesn't have a valet. That shows you the kind of way his mentality goes. Well, all I can say is, just as I said a while ago, I don't think we're going to have to worry about seeing Angel around the ring anymore because I believe, you know, I, I, I realized she was a little hard-headed the first time I busted her right in the mouth and she came back. But I don't think she'll come back after this because I think she's learned her lesson. Now, Rick Rude, I got one other lesson to teach, and that's to you, you skinny little wimp, and I'm going to do it before it's over with, believe me. Okay. Now, enough about that. Let's enough talk about, about the big tournament, man. It's a chance of a lifetime. I want to talk about this big tournament because I'm really excited about it. As you say, the chance of a lifetime. First time ever that uh, Jared Promotions has been allowed to send a representative to the World Cup tournament. And uh, $100,000 is enough incentive to the, winner. to the winners. That's, uh, that's exactly right. But first, you've got to win in this tournament. Now, I don't know if, I don't know if everybody, everybody saw this while ago. Right okay, if here. you can see it right over here, here's something I don't really understand, Lance. And I asked Eddie Marlin about it earlier. If you see, okay, here's you've got Rudin Bundy against Rich and Fargo, and then you've got the Nightmares against Mantell and Dundee. Of course, the winners of those two matches will face each other here. And then that winner gets a bye all the way out to the semifinal, right? Yeah, right. Okay, then you got the new generation against, uh, oh, well, you got the Rock and Roll Express against Hickerson and the Spoiler. The winner of that match gets a bye all the way out to the semifinals. But you got poor old Lawler and Jimmy Vallian in here, and if we win against Savage and Poffo, then we're going to have to face the winners of the Ito and Animal New Generation match. If we win there, then we're going to have to face the winner of the Rock and Roll Express and Hickerson Spoiler match. If we win there, then we're going to have to face the winner of this whole bracket up here to win this thing. Yeah. Some of these guys only got to win two matches to get in the finals, but me and Handsome Jimmy got to win four. But you know what, Lance? I like it like that. Because that means that the people are going to get to see a lot of the King and the Boogie Woogie Man down there because I... That's right. When they said there's going to be a tag team tournament and they said call around and get yourself a partner, there was only one man that I thought of, and that was handsome Jimmy Vay. And I got on the phone and I called him for three reasons, because he is unpredictable, uncontrollable, and unstoppable, and I don't think there's anybody in that tournament, even though there are some good teams, that's going to stop the Boogie Woogie Man and the Kings because we plan on being in Japan on January the 5th and walking out of there with $100,000. Well, good luck to you, partner. I'll tell you, it is a long road to hoe, and it starts Monday night right in Memphis. Now, I can, I, I can also say where this may be real interesting because in order for Jimmy Vay and I to win, you know we might have to face Tommy Rich and Jackie Fargo. That's right. 
And we also might have to face Dutch Mantell and Bill Dundee. Oh. It so it could, be, it could be a real interesting, it definitely will be a real interesting night, Monday night. But I plan on the king and the boogie woogie man to have their hands in the air at the end of that tournament. Okay, babe, good luck to you, the king. And we're going to be looking for his accent out there. As you always know this, the Jerry Lawler is going to be in there scrapping and you start waving $100,000 in front of 10 of the toughest tag teams in the country. And you better believe it is going to be severe, my friend, severe. Right now, I want you to get a little acquainted with a guy that I think you all know anyhow. Call him the Boogie Woogie Man. Call him the boy from New York. I mean, handsome Jimmy Valiant. got a uh, for the right, boogie woogie Jimmy Valiant just to let you know that Jerry Lawler and Jimmy Valiant win the tournament they then head to all Japan their first day is the 30th of January 1985 they team up and they defeat uh, Haruku Oigen and Killer Khan uh, next night they team up and they defeat Magic Dragon and Takayashi Ishikawa next night they team up and lose to Killer Khan and Masa Saito uh, next night they team up and they go to a double count out draw with Akira, Akira Soto and Mighty Inoue. Uh, next night they team up and they defeat Fumihara Niyakura and Norio Honaga. Uh, 4th February they team up and they lose to Animal Hamagotchi and Killer Khan. Uh, next night they team up and they lose to Takayashi Ishikawa and the Great Kabuki and then that is it. And they're um, back in the States. Uh, Jimmy Valiant's wrestling again on the 9th. I don't know if Jerry Lawler's wrestling again. Probably not that long after all, is it? Uh, Jimmy Lawler. Jerry Lawler is back wrestling on the 11th. Yeah, back wrestling on the 11th, back in Memphis. So yeah, I, th I think that's the new time. I think the time Jerry goes to Japan, I think. I've seen a, there is a bit of footage out there where you can watch it. I think a it. lot of the wrestling fans that have um, uh, seen Eddie Gilbert uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks or so may have had the same question that I had, and that was, what's wrong with Eddie? Uh, out, of, out of not only curiosity, but also personal concern, having known uh, Eddie ever since, and, and of course, uh, having been a longtime friend of his father's, uh, we wanted to find out from Eddie what in the world has been wrong, Eddie. You know, there's been a lot of questions asked uh, around lately, what's wrong with Eddie Gilbert, and I appreciate this time to explain it to you. You know, Tommy Rich and myself were a top-notch tag team, and uh, here lately I've been kind of hurt, but now i really got to say that, that I'm really, there's anger and I'm very mad for a simple reason I'd like to explain it to you and that reason being is that you know a lot of times when you're a tag team you discuss your strategy you sit back in the dressing room and you go, and you get ready to go out there in the ring and, and do your best and Tommy and I would sit back in the dressing room and he'd tell me he'd say Eddie when we get out there now I want you to get out there in that ring and I want you to give it all you got because boy you're young you're full of vigor and vim you can do all you can do it all and I want you to get out there, wear the guys down, soften them up, give me that tag, and I'll come in and I'll win that match. Well, you know, that, that seemed pretty good, but, you know, all the time. But finally, I guess I kind of got smartened up and realized that he was actually using me and then going around telling everybody that, oh, I did it again. I won the match. And... Uh, calling the rest of the magazines and the newspapers and everybody and uh, I think I have a little proof of that if I could show that. So we see footage of uh, Fabulous Ones versus PYTs, Eddie Gilbert tags and Tommy Rich and Tommy Rich does the uh, Luther's pressing, well, it's the pin. His strategy worked. 
he went on, he got the international title match. But you know, then he even turned his back on me. And that was something I never expected Tommy to do. But the really thing that really got down deep in my heart was that instead of asking me, his partner, the guy that really went in the ring and, and, and worked my rear end off for him and, and really helped him as much as I could and thought I was his close friend and best friend, he asked Tojo Yamamoto to go out to the ring to be his manager and wound up winning the international heavyweight title. I see footage from a few weeks ago, uh, Masarito versus Tommy Rich. Tommy Rich uh, being given a handful of something by uh, Tojo. Tojo, Tommy throws it into the eyes of uh, Ito. Off the ropes comes Tommy. High cross body. One, two, three. Tommy Rich wins and he's a new title holder. It's a show on Tommy Rich, as you can already tell. Instead, you know, like, for instance, let, let me give you a real good for instance. We used to ride up and down the road together, and instead of starting talking about maybe going back after the tag team titles after he done won the international title, all I kept hearing was, oh, man, if I could get a shot at the Southern heavyweight title, the Southern heavyweight title. And I'd sit over there, and i got to be honest with you, too, most of the time I was driving the car. And, and he'd look over at me and talk about the Southern heavyweight title, and I kept thinking to myself, well, shouldn't I have a chance at the Southern Heavyweight title? I mean, he's already the international champion. Why shouldn't I get a chance at the Southern Heavyweight Championship? Well, it never came about. He was the international heavyweight champion. He got his shot at the Southern Heavyweight Championship, and the greed really started showing because he won it. And then, boy, he was Mr. Big Shot. We may have a new double champion. wins the Southern Heavyweight title. Well, now Mr. Big Shot has both titles, the Southern Heavyweight Championship and the International Heavyweight Championship. Well, as everybody knows, when you're a champion, you got to face all the top contenders. And at this point, it was King Kong Bundy. And you know, Tommy didn't need me anymore as his tag team partner. He didn't need me as his manager, like he did Tojo Yamamoto. But he did find a very, very special position for me as special referee because he knew that he would have his hands full with King Kong Bundy. Him up. This could be it. That's it. We've seen footage of uh, King Kong Bundy pinning Tommy Rich and Eddie Gilbert making the count. Standard count there, no fast count or nothing. Tommy Rich has now lost the AWA Southern Heavyweight title. Oh, Tommy Rich now wants to know what happened with Gilbert. Gilbert pushes him. Gilbert pushes Tommy again. Eddie Gilbert just leaves the ring. Eddie Gilbert had 24, by the way. You know, then after the match was over with, Tommy grabbed my arm and he looked at me and he says, Eddie, you can't do that. You can't count me out. And there once again, Tommy was trying to use me, trying to use my integrity. Let me say something, Tommy. I'm not going to be by you, used by you anymore. Not in tag matches. And speaking of tag matches, I'll certainly never be your tag team partner again. Now, one thing I want to say to you. The only contact ever that I want to make with you again is in the ring. Because I want to prove to you and to any of these fans out here that doubt my word that I am a better man than you. And brother, I can back it up. And that's a promise to you and the wrestling world anytime and any place. We've got a new look, Eddie Gilbert. Eddie Gilbert had enough. Wants to prove his worth in the ring. I think he does a pretty good job. In all fairness, uh, Tommy Rich should have an opportunity to make some comments. And, of course, Tommy's going to be talking uh, also with the fabulous Jackie Fargo, who will be his partner in a $100,000 tournament. Let's take a look at this. You know, in all sports, there's not always one-on-one. -on -one. There's team. And I was a team wrestler all my life. 
And now uh, I had Stan and Steve, I had Tommy and Eddie, and I've had some other people, and I wrestled with my brothers for years. There's one thing that you never do in professional wrestling. I don't care what the problem is, you don't ever leave your partner. You don't ever desert him. That is a sin. That's not to be done. And especially in, my, in people that are with me. You don't do those things. That's just unheard of. And I, I'm, I'm highly ticked off about it. Tommy called me and told me that uh, Eddie's uh, hot about this. And hot. We don't get hot. We don't get mad or jealous in the wrestling business. That's not to be done. We don't do those things. You don't leave your partner. You don't let him down. That's, my gosh, man, you, man you're out there to be his partner to help him. And, and you've got two big brutes on the other side staring you in the face. That's scary enough with a partner and without one you just it's something we don't do it, it's just not done you just don't do those things and I, I want to apologize to Tommy here and Eddie called me and I talked to you about it uh, and I, I'm, I'm very disturbed over it and I know you are well you know Jackie I it's, it's kind of, I, I, you know, I ain't figured it out. I don't know if Eddie's jealous or what the deal was. You know, we've sat down and we've talked about the whole situation. And, uh, you know, it, it was a sad day in my life. You know, I mean, when, when Eddie told me, he just, I mean, he come right out and said he didn't want to team with me no more. And, uh, you know, you got the Olympics going on. And right now it's the USA. And uh, this was a big chance, you know, to, to represent the USA right there in Memphis, Tennessee. I mean, it ain't the Olympics. It's professional wrestling. But you're going for $100,000. And, and, and a chance to go to Japan and represent the South in Memphis, Tennessee right there. And, and I just can't believe that Eddie, you know, just well, packed up and left. Like I said, but let me tell you something. I'm coming to Memphis this, the day's Friday. I'll be there Monday as, as Tommy's partner. I won't leave you. Okay, Faye, brother, you're supposed to say it's Saturday. You're not supposed to tell you say what day it is. Jesus Christ, Fargo. Pally, it stinks. In case you people, are, are you teams, the other teams that are in this thing, sitting around licking your chops, let me tell you something, Pally. Training and conditioning is a way of life with me. It was just like going to school or eating breakfast. I did it all my life since I was a little boy, and I still do it. And I'm still rough, and I'm still tough. And let me tell you something, and you listen real good, pal. Tommy Rich is a man, and boy, has he got a lot to shell out, pal. And I'm going to be there with you, Tommy, baby. <laughs> Big Daddy's coming to Memphis. Yes, sir. You know, you know, Jackie, and, it's kind of like a saddest day of my life, but I think <laughs> you just made it the biggest day of my life. Right Jackie's 54. The fabulous one, Jackie Fargo and Tommy Wildfire Rich. We're going to be there and we're going to set it on fire in Memphis Monday night. Put a little reinforcement on that roof at the Coliseum, Pally, because we're coming your way. God dang, all right, man. You made my day, Jackie. I can't wait to get there Monday night. See you Monday night, folks. Okay, ready to go. The action in there. The introductions as follows. The team weighing in at 434 is the total weight. From Memphis, Tennessee, in Louisville, Kentucky, introducing David Johnson and Randy Johnson. Their opponents today, coming in at a total weight of 467 pounds. Parts unknown, the animal, and his partner from Osaka, Japan, Mr. Ito. Ito, Jimmy Hart at ringside with him. We're ready to go. Bell time, and here we go. We are back. The animal and Master Ito going against David Johnson and Randy Johnson. Uh, they are not related. Randy Johnson in the ring, uh, yellow trunks, black boots going against the animal, black tights, black boots, black trunks, black boots, sorry, animal uh, with a face paint on, oh, rams, uh, David Johnson at the knee of Masarita, who's now tagged in, red and black three quarters, no boots, Jimmy Hart the manager, David Johnson getting his tail whipped here, oh, big knife has chopped there by Ito. Stumps now by uh, Masarita with the bare feet to the back of David Johnson. Good Lord. Masarito stumping the hell out of David Johnson. Picks him up, knocks him back down with a knife edge chop. Picks him up. Knocks him back down with a knife edge chop. <laughs> Picks him up. Oh, no, rams him into the knee of the animal. 
Animal now tagged in. David Johnson trying to punch, but no, David Dan Johnson is slammed to the ground by the animal, who now comes off the ropes and drops, oh, drops a leg of sorts. Goes for the cover, one, two, kick out. Animal picks him up, now clobbers him some more. Animal absolutely obliterating David Johnson. <laughs> Jimmy asking if they're brothers. They're not brothers. One's from Louisville, one's from Memphis. One's black, one's white. <laughs> they ain't brothers. <laughs> David Johnson's still in the ring. Oh, jump and kick there by uh, Masuito. Randy Johnson's now in. Randy Johnson, he's wearing uh, overalls and trainers. Um, they may have got this guy out of the fucking studio. <laughs> He's wearing trainers for fuck's sakes. Animal now clobbering away on Randy Johnson. Stomping away on him. He's a big boy, but uh, yeah, he's a... Uh, I don't think he's a wrestler. <laughs> Rammed. No, he's, yeah. <laughs> this is bizarre. Animal now tags in Masarito. Oh, knife no head to chop to the, uh, the husky Randy Johnson. And again, Randy Johnson to the, uh, the husky Randy Johnson. And again Masarito now stumping away on Johnson in his uh, overalls and t-shirt and turn trainers. Masarito picks him up, knocks him back down again with a knife head chop. <laughs> Masarito stumping away on him. Masarito just picking it up, knocking him down, picking it up, knocking him down. <laughs> Tags in the animal. Double Irish rip now on Randy Johnson. Double back elbow. Down goes Randy. Forearm fall by the animal. Now choking away Randy Johnson in the middle of the ring. Breaks on the count of four. So yeah, nothing wrong here. Oh. Randy Johnson now been having his face rubbed in the canvas. Definitely paying his dues here, that's for sure. Oh, that will clobbers him down with a forearm smash to the back, tags in Masarito. Please finish this, this is a bit, uh... Sorry. Oh, big head, but by Ito. Ito picks up Randy Johnson, knocks him down, picks him up, knocks him down, <laughs> kicks. Good lord, this is Gypsy Joe type fucking offence. Please. Three minutes. They should have ended maybe two minutes ago. Nope. Ito. As, no, animal, no, animal tags him. Irish up there by the animal on Randy Johnson. Big uh, double axe. Down goes Randy. Tags in Masarito. Masarito's going up to the... No, no, doesn't double Irish up now by Ito and the Animal. Oh, back body drop there by Masarito and Randy. I, don't, I really don't think Randy Johnson's a wrestler. Irish, oh, excuse me. Irish, he, he, won, he hits the ropes well, but no good to bumps. No good bumpy. And... Slam by Ito and Randy. Randy's Ito's now going up to the second rip on the inside. The second rip on the inside. Fallen headbutt. Goes for the cover. One, two, three. Mercifully, it is over, and your winners are Masarito and the Animal. Truly, not much more than a light workout in a four minutes and fifty-eight seconds. They came through with a victory over the team. Of Randy Johnson and David Johnson, Hart takes his charges back to put him in a cage, and that was the end of that one. 4.58 was the time on it with the Ito and the Animal winning. i tell you a couple of other animals, but real athletes, man. I'm talking about Popo Mania. Randy Savage and Sir Lanny Popo. Got a little clip I want to look at.
this music video of uh, Randy and Lani, just to let you know, we won't be seeing Jim Neidhart anymore. Jim Neidhart is gone. He is going to be going to uh, Championship Wrestling from Florida. Uh, just because they mentioned um, Ron Mikula, Joey Vick, I'm going to get his name wrong again, Mikula, but so they've had their series of football uh, tournament, football helmet tournaments, matches. And Jimmy Hart mentioned no um, Jim Neidhart, but Jim Neidhart is gone. So we've lost Jim Neidhart. He's gone forever. He's never coming back because he's going to Championship Wrestling from Florida and he's going to WWF. We've lost um, Coco and Norvell for a year. Um, well, for six or seven months we've lost. So we're, we're losing people, but we're not really gaining anybody. We Obviously, we gained Bundy a few weeks ago, but we're not... We're not gaining any talent, which is... We had this uh, a couple of years ago. 81, 82. Um, we had it where we lost a load and then you sort of gained... The, the, the two or three that you gained weren't of good a calibre as what you lost. But I th that things may change soon, so... Obviously we've now got Eddie Kill, but doing things and... But this is from last week. Go back because I don't know what Lance six. I was talking over Lance. Sorry. We'll hear what Lance's got to say because he just clipped to a match from last week. Rick and Robert, uh, the Rock and Roll Express, uh, certainly have championship on their mind. And one way to do it is go after the Southern Tag Champions. Higgerson and Spoiler were the object of their attention. Let's look at that action, and brother, it was some action. So this is in the studio. This is, I don't know when this is. Obviously, we didn't, we missed things last week, and we haven't seen sort of action a lot. We've got seven tag team titles. Phil Hickerson and the Sport of Rock and Rock Express. See Phil Hickerson going against them at a total of 437 pounds from Pensacola, Florida, and Nashville, Tennessee. Rick Morton and Robert Gibson, the Rock and Roll Express. One fall 15, a non-title match. So this is non-title. Funny, funny, Phil. Oh, you and your great sense of humor. See, what they got all so Robert, oh, sorry, Ricky started for his team. Black tights, uh, silvery boots. Phil Hickerson actually started for his uh, team. Red and blue trunks, red and blue tights, sorry, white boots. I'm pretty sure I haven't seen this. Pretty sure we haven't seen this because the last few weeks we've sort of seen bits and pieces. Um, last time we saw Hickerson and Spoiler, they were going to get Jim Jamison and Lou Winston. Oh, good lord! Rock and Roll Express just won! Rock and Roll Express just won! Phil Hickerson just took a pin! Holy moly! Higson just got knocked down, he got jackknife pinned, and the Rock and Roll Express have won. I can't believe it, Dave. That's phenomenal. I have brought my lunch. It's all over. It won't take two. It won't take two. It take two. It won't Are take two. It won't take two. It happened. I didn't even ring the bell. Look at this right here. Hey, it happened right here. It happened. Instant replay. Colin Obertark, Ricky Morton gets hit by by Phil Hickerson. Ricky Morton punches Phil Hickerson down. Jack knifes the pin. One, two, three. <laughs> Phil Hickerson and the spoiler have been pinned, but they haven't lost a title. Non-title match. You lost the match. It was a one, two, three. 
We saw it right there in the ring, and it's all over with. So please take it on out. We got the right now, brother. I got a thousand dollars you can make this ring right now. A thousand dollars. What? A thousand dollars. A thousand dollars you can make this ring right now. Because that is a freak. That ain't even wrong the bell. You uh, pardon me for you pardon me for asking, but I don't see the money hanging out. Let me tell you something, man. Our word is our bond. Our word is our bond. A thousand dollars. Hold it up. Your word is your bond. Well, I got a sneak and hunt that Rick and Robert ain't coming back on your word that you're going to put a thousand dollars. They owe us a thousand dollars. They owe us, they got us. I paid them and you got them yet. Get old man Marlin out here. Where's that old promoter at? Get him out here. He owes us. Uh, you mean Phil Hickerson and the Spider are going to put up a thousand bucks? You, you just got beat in a match. No, we didn't get beat. Come here. And he's he crying. We had to get our paychecks, right? That's right. Okay. There's the money. If they come back out here, the office owes you more than a thousand dollars. Yeah. So the thousand dollars will be held out of your check, and it'll go to the rock and roll. If they come out here, good enough, good enough, good enough, good enough, good enough. You're gonna put it up, okay? Uh, okay, Dave. Oh. <laughs> you talk about embarrassed. Oh, Robert Express come back out. They want that thousand dollars, baby. But they're attacked in the ring by Hickerson and a spoiler. Out goes Morton. Spoiler and the... Oh, no. Oh, no. One, two, three. Rock and Roll Express win again. Rock and Roll Express win again. <laughs> the spoiler got knocked down and Robert Gibson this time with the win. And the Rock and Roll Express win $1,000. <laughs> they didn't even go a minute in two bouts. Ten seconds. Bill Eggerson... The spoiler. Oh, the bell oh yeah, the you bell rang in it. Hey, listen, they just beat you the second time. I take longer to blow my nose than no. you guys took it. No. All right, Phil. Now it's all over with. You lost a thousand bucks. No, man, no, you, you ain't even wrong. Look at this creep here. He don't even know how to ring a bell. The bell rang. The bell rang. You that guys bell, just... I didn't hear no yeah, you lost it, and that's the way it goes. can't do it, man, I guarantee you. They Ain't did nobody it. can beat Hickerson in the spoiler like that! Well, they did it, did it, it Bill. Did. And everybody saw it right here on television. Now, we we got more action coming up here. No, 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 you ain't got nothing. Yeah, we do. We've got right here, Russell. You get them back out here right now, and I'll put these belts up right now. Oh, oh, come on. Get them back in the ring. And we'll get them a belt match right here. You I'm just got to get beat twice right in there. Shut I up. Hey, listen. You have to get the creep back out here. And I'll give them a championship match right now. You're going to put here. the belts right up on the line right now. Now, I'm sure. You get out here. What do you say, Dan? They want to put the belts up for a third track. They just got through. They're going to put the belts up. You put the belts up. They give a championship match right here. Get the back out here. If they come back out here, it is a title match. Good enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This will be a title match. They'll yeah. come back out here. Oh, hey! Felix and the spoiler are in the ring for a third time. This time, title is on the line. And here come the Rock and Roll Express for a third time. They've already won a thousand dollars. All four men now in the ring, brawling, and the bell is ringing. We are underway. Ricky with Phil, Robert with the spoiler. Drop kick by Ricky Morton. The spoiler's working away. Robert Gibson. Side of look by Robert Gibson. Shove off by the spoiler. Ow, no. Phil Hickson dropped the ropes, and Robert Gibson goes flying out the ring. Phil Hickson with a chair. Oh, across the head of uh, Robert, Ricky Morton. Ring the bell. Hickerson and the spool have been disqualified. Oh! Robert Gibson thrown the... Uh, thrown into the ring post. spool has got a chain wrapped around his fist and... Oh, blasts uh, Ricky, give Ricky Morton with that. Felixson with a chair. Oh, across the head of Ricky Gibson. Robert Gibson... 
I think we're bleeding. Ricky Morton's probably bleeding as well. Bit both the Rock and Roll Express are bleeding on a Saturday morning. Oh. So they they have lost the title. They've lost the match, but still the champions are uh, Hickerson and the Spoiler. Dunk! Oh, across the head. Robert Gibson smashed across the head by the Spoiler with a chair. Spoiler gets Hickerson to get Robert Morton, get Ricky Morton up, and he gets wailed with the chair as well. Jerry Klein gets rid of the chair, throws the chair outside. Spoiler's now choking away Robert Gibson with that chain. Oh! Here's around his fist, beating on Robert. Both Rick and Robert bleeding in there. Rick and Robert win the match. They don't win the titles on a disqualification, but. In one day, they beat Higgerson and Spoiler three times, but they are flat, getting roughed up right now. Higgerson, look out, David. Come on, Bill. Higgerson and Morton now brawling on the outside. Higgerson's back in the ring to double team with Robert Gibson. Oh, they're going for a spike pile driver. They're going for a spike pile driver, and they hit a spike pile driver on Robert Gibson. Good lord. Felixson going with Robert Ricky Morton, and spike pile driver again on Ricky Morton. Rock and Roll Express are down and out. Oh, what the hell was that? A grazing leg drop. Higgerson and the spoiler absolutely annihilating the Rock and Roll Express. They've already lost it, so they don't figure they have anything to lose except a fine in there. We need to get somebody out here, get these guys out of here. They are chilling, Rick and Robert. Use the chair, chains, and everything else. Rock and roll rammed into each other. They're down and they are out. And Hickerson and the Spoiler are leaving the ring. Hey! You're sitting there. Right. You look at that right there. They won the match. If that's what it is to be a winner, brother, I'm happy to be a champion. Let them win all they want to, brother. I'm happy to be a champion. You guys using chairs and chains and everything else. Rick and Robert. Get out of here. Oh, I tell you, bad news, Hickerson and the spoiler. They had some comments to make about uh, Rick and Robert. Uh, of course, it was a situation where they will never live down the fact. I don't care how you cut it. Sure, they beat him and bloodied him and all that. They lost three times in one day. Let's hear what they had to say about Rick and Robert. Morton, you and Gibson. You listen, and you listen real close, brother. Hickerson and the spoiler are sitting here in sort of a state of shock and embarrassment. The embarrassment part of it, and the shock. The shock is that we have got a mark against our record. Someone finally beat the Southern Tag Team Champions. They got a win on us. The humiliation part of it comes because it's two young punks like yourself. Because you're punks. But you paid for that win, brother. And you paid for it through your own blood. We beat you like dogs. We left you laying in the middle of the ring and laying in your own blood. And you was begging. And you was begging us to please quit beating on you so much. We finally got tired of kicking your brains out, brother. So that's the reason why we got out and left you laying there. Let me tell you something, brother, the fight has just started. We're going to pick up where we left off. The next time that you crawl in that ring, brother, with Hickerson and the spoiler, you're going to pay for it through your blood. We're going to humiliate you. We're going to hurt you so bad that you're going to be running to the promoters and begging them to take that loss off our record, and you don't want that win. You mark my word because I've never told a lie in my life. I didn't see Hickerson laughing on that. I'll tell you one thing, uh, Rick and Robert, they don't use as many words as Hickerson and the spoiler did, but they had something to say about that particular action also as uh, they ended up 
with a record of three and zero oh on Hickerson that and Spoiler that day. And let's listen to what they had to say. Short and sweet. You know, Ricky, this must be our lucky day because we've got Hickerson and a spoiler. You know, we don't prove to all the people out there, and they saw that we can beat them guys in a wrestling match. Now we're going to show we can beat them in a fight. You got that right, brother. Just like Robert said, we proved to everybody that we can beat the Mid-South Tag Team Champions right in the middle of the ring. We've done it twice. Two straight, Robert. But now this time, brother, we're going to see if we can beat you in a street fight. We don't care what it takes. Come on down there. Bring your cheers. Bring your chains, brother, because we're going to have something there waiting on you. I'm talking about the Rock and Roll Express, brother, and we're going to put you down. I'm telling you that, Phil Hickerson and the spoiler, you are going down by the hands of the Rock and Roll Express. Coming up in just a little bit, we'll be seeing the new generation going against the Night Bears right here on Championship Wrestling. Back in just a moment. Steak lovers, beware. Someone might snitch all your Heinz 57 sauce for her recipes. Well, here's my kind of recipe. Thick, rich. Heinz 57 sauce on a big juicy T-bone. Love the way those savory spices surround a piece of steak. Why keep all this flavor just for recipes? He'll eat those words. Yes. Heinz 57 sauce, the recipe for savory steak and chicken and ground beef. And Did you receive your Fleming Circular with this summer's hottest furniture buys? Look at this great wall, only $7.99. Cherry Console Mirror, 88 Choice of four Riverside Table Groups, $99. Sensational. Cal Style Dinette, $368. Queen Anne Desk, $288. Amazing Sectional Sofa, $888. Maple Rocker, $48. And that's not even one page of this fantastic eight-page circular. Pick up your copy of the hottest furniture buys of the year at the Fleming store near you. Now you can compete in the Olympics, too. There's Play McDonald's. When the U.S. wins, you win Olympic games and win up to $10,000 instantly. Or keep your cards, and when the U.S. wins your event, you win a Big Mac, regular fries, or a Coca-Cola. So go to McDonald's and get your game cards today, because when the U.S. wins, you win. People ask me, do I really smoke Captain Black? Do I argue with umpires? Captain Black, never a bite in the bowl. You know, when you talk about a $100,000 tournament like's taking place in uh, Tokyo, Japan in January of 85, you wonder whether a guy like Handsome Jimmy even thinks about the $100,000. The boogeyman's kind of wild. He had some comments. Wrestling fans of Memphis, Tennessee, your time is coming. That's right, you are in for a real treat because handsome Jimmy Valiant, the Boogie Woogie Man, is coming home. And he's teaming up with the King, Jerry Lawler. Whoa, imagine that Boogie Man feels good, brother and sister. I want to say hi. Oh, man, I wish Lawler said I'd give him a kiss too, Jack. You know, so that Boogie Man's been all over the United States. I've been from New York City and I'm now not to Missouri. I just got back from Neptune. That's the universe, you know what I'm saying? I just got back Neptune last night, in fact. About free thunder. Free thunder, Neptune. I just passed you that out, brother. And me and Jerry King Lawler. Can you understand? Can you get off? People, brothers and sisters, at the same time, Jerry King Lawler and the Boogie Woogie Man together, brother, in a big tag team tournament. Fall the goal. $100,000. That's a lot of gold. That's a lot of canary, baby. And I'm talking about the World Cup. And the winner, the winner goes to Japan. You know, I've been to Japan many times. I got an old lady over there. Yeah, I don't know if I should send her support or not. But I got an old lady. Me and the boy. Me and now. You know, I got two or three little Japanese boys, man. They look like this, just like this. Hey, I'm going on backwards. Me and the King Lala. Me and Jerry and Lala look out too much to take on one break. We come in, Jack. You know, the Poppos. The Poppos, we going to have to be. Yeah, they got a daddy and they got two boys. And they're nasty. Randy, Randy. Whoa, well, my say, we gonna get down, brother. We gonna get done at Memphis, Tennessee. Look out, the Booker Man, Hansel Jimmy, is coming to town. You know. Woo! What'd he say? <laughs> Handsome Jimmy coming to town to be with the king. Hey, talking about coming to town, it'll be coming to your town, uh, Championship Wrestling. Let me give you some action. Uh, on this uh, night, on the 4th of August, Jimmy Valiant is going to a 20-minute time limit draw with Tully Blanchard in Mid-Atlantic. be a landmark night. Take a look at the first couple of names of wrestlers there. 
Jerry the King Lawler and Bill Superstar Dundee will be in an action over there in Jackson along with the Rock and Roll Express. Lots of other great names and eight great matches tomorrow night. Box office opens at 12 noon. But now you can pick up your tickets in time, head on home for that Sunday dinner, and then be back at 8 o'clock for the action that goes. And you'll be looking forward to plenty of it starting at 8. Be sure and get your tickets. Be there tomorrow night. Blyville, Arkansas. That's next Friday coming up on August the 10th. It's going to be a big night of action with Wildfire Tommy Rich being there. New Generation will also be right there. Those are just some of the names that will be in Blyville. That's on August the 10th. Also on August the 10th at Batesville, Mississippi, the Rock and Roll Express that we were just talking about will be down there. King Kong Bundy will be present in Batesville next Friday night, August the 10th. And on Saturday night, a week from tonight, West Helena, Arkansas at the National Guard Armory, you're going to be seeing Jimmy Hart will be over there, Tojo Yamamoto. Plenty of action will be taking place in the National Guard Armory in West Helena a week from tonight. Make it a point to be right there. Friday night, August the 17th, Milan, Tennessee at the Milan High School, sponsored by the Rebounders Club. Tickets on sale at the Milan Banking Company and the First American Bank. The King will be up that way, and we missed Ripley, Tennessee. Yeah, there it is. I'm sorry. We're talking about Milan, and here's Ripley all the way. Ripley at the high school, sponsored by the JCs. And, of course, some other great names coming on Sunday, August the 12th. Now, Milan, Tennessee. Rebounders are the sponsors. You want to be there and see the King and Wildfire Tommy Rich. Following that will be Sunday, August the 19th in Lexington, Tennessee at the new high school. Great location for some great action of championship wrestling when it comes into Lexington on August the 19th. That's a Sunday. Friday, August the 24th in Carothersville, Missouri at the high school sponsored by the Boosters Club. You can get your tickets right now. Save yourself a buck. No bad deal to say the least. Saturday, August the 25th, Jonesboro, Arkansas with another great card coming into Jonesboro as well as uh, August the 25th in Trenton, Tennessee at the Gibson County Fair. Get your advance tickets and get in the fair free. Now on the 28th, Ripley, Mississippi at the Ripley High School. That's all the action coming up. Championship wrestling, when it comes your way, take the whole family out. I rest assure you, my friend, you'll see no action like the action of championship wrestling. Water Valley, Mississippi, yeah, coming in September. More on that later. Dutch Mantel joined by superstar Bill Dundee. Brother, there's a team that the elimination tournament will have to look out for. Two tough guys. Memphis, Tennessee, let me say one thing. I don't know how the fans feel about this tournament coming up, but from a wrestler standpoint, it is the biggest thing ever signed for Memphis, Tennessee. Now, we're not talking about $5,000 or $10,000. We're talking about $100,000 if we get through this tournament. We've got a chance to really go for some mega bucks. Now, we're going to have 10 teams in this tournament. I, now, you're going to have Jerry Lawler and uh, Jimmy Valiant. You're going to have the Poffo Mania in there. You're going to have the Rock and Roll Express. And I'm sure all these teams think they're going to be favored in it. But I think the team to watch is Dutch Mantell and Bill Dundee. Now, I've had my differences with Dundee in the past, but I know one thing about Dundee. Dundee will do anything for money. He will do almost anything. And I talked to him the other day, and I got his opinion on it. And all I told him is, Bill, all we got to do is get along one night. And then we're on our way to Tokyo, Japan in January 1985 to compete for the World Cup Championship for $100,000. Now, boys, I'm going to tell you, all the teams that are listening, I'm speaking for myself, but I'm going to be going in there 110% sitting on DR, dead ready, because I want to make a chance for myself and Dundee to gain $100,000. So Monday night, I'll be looking at all you other guys across the ring, as with my partner, Bill Dundee. And we're going to be in there digging. We're going to be in there grinding. We're going to be in there really going for it because I want some money, and Dundee does too. And I think I know the way Dundee feels, but in case there's some doubt out there, Dundee had a few words for you fans in Memphis. Well, Memphis, Tennessee, this is a superstar coming at you live in living color. I'm coming back Monday night to team up with Dirty Dutch Mantel, and we're going to enter that tag team tournament. Now, the, the winners of it are going to get a little trip to Japan, and if you win over in Japan, you're going to get $100,000. Now, that's about the 
A year's wages in a wrestler's life, that's about what we make for a year. Now, I'd like to win that in one night. Now, Dirty Dutch Mantel likes to win, and Bill Superstar Dundee likes to win. And I really don't care what team it is. But whatever it is, brother, you're going to get 110% from me, and he's going to give 110%. Now, I'm just looking forward to seeing all you nice folks there, the young ones, the old ones, the pink ones, the blue ones, and the black ones. Because I love you all there in Memphis, Tennessee, and I'm sure you love Bill Dundee. So I'm going to see you all Monday night, and Dutch Mantel and the Superstar is going to win, and that's a promise from me to you. Okay, Billy and Dutch will be one of the teams you're going to have to do it to. We're going to take time out. We'll be back with the Night Bears and the New Generation in just a moment. You know, there are two good ways to save big bucks on car care. Everything you need to keep your car running right at true discount prices. Here's another real good reason to make Auto Shack your parts store. Premium quality ignition parts. Everything from regulators to modules, conventional and electronic. Now at Auto Shack, your discount parts supermarket. Champion TV and Appliance Rentals has the new GE Blue Tube televisions. Now look, this is your standard dull gray TV tube, and here's the new GE tube. It's blue, and that's just the start. These GE Blue Tube TVs come in consoles, portables, and remotes. Call Champion TV today, and we'll send out one of our radio dispatch bands. You can be watching a new GE Blue Tube tonight. Rent on the Champion way. In Memphis, call Northgate 358, Whitehaven 396, Southgate 948 1036. Low prices, Walmart's quality. Walmart. It's the latest athletic sports shoes at Walmart. Pro Champs Plus. Built for speed and comfort, and they're only $12. And man, you can move up to the new three-quarter height Pro Champs Plus. The one made to move. Now just $15. Two styles of Pro Champs Plus at even bigger savings now through Saturday. That's the Walmart way. It's a better day when you save the Walmart way. This is Brian Teglon. I'm here to tell you that Liberty Chrysler Plymouth has a great selection of cars and prices. 78 Dodge Magnum, 99 down, 135 per month at Liberty Chrysler Plymouth. Uh, that's what we've been waiting on. The big Jimmy, for crying out loud, get up the ring and wrestle, will you? Wait a minute, come here. Come here, guys. Look, wait a minute. Tell me, do I need glasses? Or, come here, Russell. Now, you're supposed to have 20-20 vision. Look at this guy. What happened to this guy's beard? Look at him right there. <laughs> oh, come on. That's got to be a joke. They need music. We don't look at that. I can't believe that. That's got to be a These are the nightmares. The greatest team in the history of professional wrestling. What's the matter with this kid, man? Hey, when you get up there, Jimmy, we're ready to go. <laughs> New generation will take care the of the Tojo talked right? the poor guy. Look at Look, he looks stupid with a beard now. Look at that. He looks horrible with his beard shaved off. That is, look. Looks like the bride of Frankenstein. Look at this guy. <laughs> okay, Jim, yes, fine. All right, here's the official introductions in there. Total of 431 pounds wrestling out of Charleston, West Virginia, and coming into Lexington, uh, Kentucky, the new generation. Mark Johnny Kojo Yamamoto in their corner on the side of the ring at a total weight of 430 from parts unknown with Jimmy Hart in their corner, I hope. The Nightmare. Exploration of time match. We're ready for so we have back exploration of time tag match. Nice to see some classic adverts in this. If you're listening, you can watch the uh, watch the video on YouTube. We've got the new generation versus the nightmares. Uh, nightmare number one. Blue mask, blue and white trunks, white blue and white tights, white boots going up against Johnny Wilhoit. Pink trunks, white boots. Sunset flip by Wilhoit. One, two, kick out. Dear the nightmare breaks up the pin. Tag into the other a nightmare who's again wearing blue mask, blue and white tights, white boots. Can't ever type with Johnny Wilhoit. Full on dragon twist by Wilhoit on nightmare number two. Tag into Mark Batten. Matching pink trunks, white boots, no beard, as you heard Jimmy Hart uh, laughing about. And he does look silly without a beard. Back the ice by the Nightmare. Takes Batten over at his corner, now double teamed by the Nightmares. Mark Batten escapes. New gen are wary of managed by Tojo Yamamoto. Nightmares are managed by Jimmy Hart, but he's gone backstage. Number one's back in, corner by Johnny Wilhoit. 
Pushes it Nightmare into the corner, they whip from corner to corner. Big back by a jump as the Nightmare came bouncing out of the corner. Complaining of a hair pull <laughs> on a back body drop. Yes, well done, sir. Jimmy Hart uh, still complaining about the beard. Can't ever top. Nightmare goes behind, takes down Batten. Ah, oh, but now Jimmy Hart now trying to put the beard back on Mark Batten. <laughs> with some shoe. <laughs> with some obsession with the beard. I go for a uh, Greco Roman test of strength. Very evenly uh, matched contest with these guys. They're both sort of similar heights, similar builds. And the monkey flip by Batten releases the hold and a hip toss takes down the nightmare once again. Nightmare goes begging off in the corner. Nightmare goes over to get some words of wisdom from his tag team. Danny Davis and uh, Ken Wayne. Tag in a Johnny Wilkwit. Sorry, I'd like now applied to the nightmare. Shove off by the nightmare. Shoulder tackle down goes the nightmare. Johnny Wilkwit comes off the ropes, leaps over. Heads uh, up. Stand aside, headlock, headlock take down by Wilkwit. Head scissor reversal by the nightmare. Kip up by Wilkwit. Push back up to the feet. Jimmy Hart calling it the hood. <laughs> okay, Faye, bring us a mask. Nightmare back in with Jimmy Wilhoit. Side head up by the Nightmare. Shove off by Wilhoit. Shoulder tackle down goes Wilhoit. Off the ropes comes the Nightmare. Over the top goes the Nightmare. And now he catches him. Oh, beautiful power slam there by Johnny Wilhoit. Drop kick by Johnny Wilhoit. Down goes the Nightmare. David, think he didn't get the attention right there of the Nightmare number two. That's Will Hoyt over there with his partner, Mark Batten. Okay, you want me to give him some counseling, baby? So I just gave Will Hoyt getting some words of wisdom by Tojo. Nightmare back in the ring. I think it's the other Nightmare, I think. Can't ever tie up. Side to look by Will Hoyt. Shove off by the Nightmare over the top. Oh, neat in the back by the other Nightmare to the back of Johnny Will Hoyt. If he was uh, distracted by a small bird, I think. Oh, Nightmare with a couple of right hands. Knocks, rocks Will Hoyt, and again. Double team now by the Nightmares. Oh. Nightmare picks up Will Hoyt. Irish whips him, ducks down, big back body. Oh, landed on his butt. Tagging it the other Nightmare. Nightmare picks up Will Hoyt, slams him down. Oh, went for an elbow drop, but Will Hoyt moved. Will Hoyt gets attacked to Mark Batten. Mark Batten's in now, clobbering on the Nightmares. Irish whips Nightmare, reversal by Nightmare. Punch to the gut. Oh, cheap shot by Jimmy Hart. Mark Batten now uh, distracted by Jimmy Hart, but here comes Tojo. Double teamed by the Nightmares in the ring. Choking uh, Batten in the court and the ropes, and now Jimmy Hart putting some shoe polish on him to replicate the beard. Good lord, covering him in shoe polish. Good god. Jesus. <laughs> Tojo's got Joey Calhoun distracted, but Tojo's now uh, in the ring. Knife edge chopped to the nightmare. Knife edge chopped to the nightmare. Jimmy Hart's just running around. Jimmy Hart's out of the ring. Mac Batten powering him up and. Absolutely clobbering the nightmares in the ring. Now put something on you. They may take your beard off one whisker at a time. New generation win the first four by disqualification. By Jimmy Hart as the nightmares held him. And they go running off. We're going to have to get from the referee whether it was a disqualification or not. While we're checking out that, take a look at this and you'll see how Hart did it. He wouldn't do it by himself. He couldn't do it. 
But you see the nightmares holding him down while the referee's getting Tojo back around. I love in this instant replay. They've used it many, many times today. We see Jimmy Hart painting Mark Patton with that shoe polish. Really didn't see what Jimmy Hart's problem was with the beard being shaven off. But anyway, there you go. Storyline, bro. He runs and gets out of there as Mark Batten and Johnny Wilhoit really getting a little revenge back. Tojo and Jimmy Hart. Tojo never got a hold of him. We're going to take time out. We'll be back after we check the clock. Okay, I want to remind you, coming up immediately following Studio Wrestling will be the Lone Ranger. And then at 1 o'clock, Chicago and Milwaukee will be going at it. And coming out right now, the new generation. We've got just about 20 seconds. Lance, I say, I hate to interrupt you right here, but Jimmy Hart, you're going to pay for what you did to my face. The nightmares you're going to pay. You're not going to go around and do this stuff. To me, I guarantee you that. We're going to I take care of business as soon as we no get a chance. I tell you what, you, Jimmy Hart, you and your two international gangsters, you dry it up, shrimp, Jimmy Hart. I tell you what, you gonna pay all for this? You gonna pay? Tojo, the new generation. I can't blame them one bit to tell you the honest truth about the way they feel. Well, quickly, let me give you a reminder that the action comes with a one hundred thousand dollar Japanese Gold Cup championship. We don't have time to go over all of the first round matches. Sensational night. We hope you'll be there Monday night with us. I know one thing. Dave Brown will be back with us next week. And we'll be looking forward to seeing you. Until that time, Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. We've just watched the 4th of August 1984 edition of Memphis Television. That was quite entertaining. A bit, a lot of promos, but they were building up. They're building up to something, so there wasn't sort of wasted motion. But, yeah, that was all very entertaining. I mean, at the end there, we got some uh, adverts as well, which is all good fun. So, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your continued support, as always. Thank you very much for... Uh, keeping the memory of memphis alive by listening my, me recording you listening is all good um like i said before 1984 is going to be ending around november and then 1985 there's not a lot of footage on youtube of 1985 for some reason um but 1986 is going to be the whole year so 1985 might be done sort of quite quickly but we've done it before we'll keep on doing it so thank you very much um don't forget to follow the network on Twitter at PTBN Wrestling. Subscribe, listen to all the great content. You've also got the North South Connection, the sister network. Again, available on all good podcast suppliers. You can find them on Twitter at No So Pod Network. They're also on YouTube, as is the place to be. And you've got the brand new network, the Backbone Wrestling Network. Can be found on Twitter at Backbone24 with some uh, content from both networks and they're coming up with their own content as well so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much to the fine folk of memphis tennessee thank you very much to lance russell dave brown and jerry jarrett and until next time when it's spring again i'll bring again tulips from amsterdam with a heart that's true, I'll give to you tulips from Amsterdam. I can't wait until the day you fill these eager arms of mine. Like the windmill keeps on turning, that's how my heart keeps on yearning. For the day I know we can share these tulips from Amsterdam. I'll give to you tulips from Amsterdam. 
I can't wait until the day you fill these eager arms of mine Like the wind keeps on turning That's how my heart keeps on yearning For the day I know we can Share these tulips from Amsterdam Share these tulips 